Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I will continue our topics about the hypothesis test. So if you haven't look at my look at my previous videos, so please look at that first. So here in this video, I will talk about two important errors when we do the hypothesis test we can make, and also there is one important values to help us to decide our non-hypothesis and uh, alternative hypothesis, which one is true. Okay, so first let's talk about the two types of errors we can make when we get the conclusion about our hypothesis testing. So about hypothesis testing, what we can do, we can have two conclusions, right? The first one is we reject our hypothesis test, uh, the non-hypothesis, the H0. And the other is we can accept it, or in other words, we failed to reject it. Okay, so this one, so what will happen if our, in fact, the non-hypothesis H0 is correct, then when we say our conclusion is we accept this, so this is means this is a good uh, answer, what we want, so we make a correct conclusion. And the other is if our uh, non-hypothesis H0 is not correct, so because our H1 is competing with our or contradict our non-hypothesis, so this means if our H1 is correct, in other words, we can we should reject our H0 because it's wrong. So that means in this case, when we have H1 is true and our conclusion is reject H0, uh, zero. So this means everything is good. However, the other two cases is very uh, important error we make. So the first one is if our non-hypothesis H0 is correct, however, our conclusion is reject H0. So in this situation, we will make an error, and we call this one as a type 1 error. And then the other type uh error is if our H0 is wrong, we say H1 is correct, but we still accept our H0 non-hypothesis. So in this case, we also make a uh, error. So this is, we call this is type 2 error. Okay, so this is two types of the important uh, error we can make for our hypothesis uh, testing. So the one is easy for us to make a type 1 error and type 2 error. So type 1 error is when assumption is correct but we still reject. So in other words here, this is if we too strict about our uh, assumption. Or say when we do the testing, we are too strict. We choose a too narrow uh, critical region. So in this case, we can make a type 1 error. And then for the other thing about the type 2 error, when our non-hypothesis is wrong, but we still say it's correct, then in this way, this means we are too kind of our hypothesis. So now this means we are not strict enough. Our choice of our critical region is, is too wide. And uh, so that means we should reject our H0, but we still accept it. So in these two cases, uh, what, uh, one more thing about the hypothesis test errors is sometimes this two type of error is so important and we want to know the probability of each type of the error can happen. So for here, we even give them two symbols to show this. The first one is about alpha, and second is about beta. So the alpha is giving us a probability of type 1 error. So we also call this the significance level of a hypothesis test. And then, of course, the beta. Beta will for our type 2 error. So here for the beta, this is the probability of type 2 error. And also if we say 1 minus the beta, that means this is a probability type 2 error didn't happen. So in other words, they will give us the value of the probability of correctly reject over H0. So we call this as the power of uh, testing. 
Okay, so this is about two important uh, uh, parameters or values of uh, testing alpha and beta. And then also we have another important uh, value. So we call this as about a p-value. So here for this uh, two type of the errors, so of course people will interesting about how to decrease in the probability to have this two uh, have this uh, two type of the errors. So in general, when we say the uh, compare this two type of errors, right? We say if we are too strict, then that means we the probability will uh, type one error will happen larger, and if it is not strict enough then the type 2 error will likely to happen. So in other words, this is really hard to change our strict level, or in other words, the critical level to in decrease in both of this uh, value, uh, this uh, alpha and beta together. So here, if you're f not familiar about what is a critical level, so please look at my previous video. I explain about what is a critical level and how to use a critical level to decide it over critical region. So now we know it's really hard to change the critical value to get a uh, to decrease in alpha and beta smaller together. So what we should do, in fact, here, what we can do is we can increase in the sample size about our value n. So if we increase in the sample size n, then we will get a smaller alpha and beta together. So this one, actually, if, if you still remember my uh, explanation about the confidence uh, interval. You should know in that topic, we also say if we increase in the sample size, and then we will get a better confidence intervals, a more uh, higher uh, confidence levels interval. So that means, to be honest, when we do the statistical survey, in other words, when we try to draw a sample from our population, in general, it means that from the mathematical direction, we think the larger of the sample size is always better. So this actually is a consistent with our com common sense, right? So it means if we select more people from our population, then we can get a better information about the populations. So that is good for our statistic theorists. However, in fact, this is really hard. Because whenever we choose more or we try to select more samples, it means we need to spend more time, more uh, money, or even more energy uh, to do the analysis of the data. So that means, uh, although from the probability of statistic aspect, we think the larger sample size is better. However, in the real world we need to consider about our limited time and also money on this project okay so this is about these two values and then about the p-value p-value is also about uh, this uh, can help us to do a hypothesis test so p-value actually is a smallest uh, a significant level, or in other words, our alpha, that would help us to reject our non-hypothesis for a given data. So now let me use a graph to explain this again. So here we have a uh, axis. So here for this one, we say we choose the H0 value, which is give us the value of our population parameters. For example, if our H0 is about the mu is equal to 30, so then here for this case, our H0 value is equal to 30. And then for here, if we given a data set, so if you already look my look at my previous video, you know the test statistic for this non-hypothesis is our x bar, right? So here, if for this data, we have this x bar is be given here. So this is our given value of our x bar. 
and then how to reject this h, uh, this value x bar. So the method we will reject is is we will choose our critical region. It's just the right in the point. It's just a little smaller than this. Okay, and because our critical region is always a symmetric one, so in other words, left in the point will be symmetric with respect to our h0 value. So now in this case, we can, by the given value of our x bar and the h, uh, h0 value, we can find the left in point and right in point of our critical region. And now what we know is, we know the probability of 1 minus r is equal to the probability of this uh, region, uh, of our x bar is inside this region, right? So that means here we call this value of alpha is as our p value. So in other words, if now our left end point and right end point of this criti critical region is denoted by a and b, then that means here the probability of our a and b is make our x bar is inside this uh, a and b. This probability should equal 1 minus p. Okay, so this is how we can find the p value for this uh, situation. So this is if you compare this with our previous video, you can see the only difference is now uh, what we have is instead of giving the value of alpha and then compute the critical region. So here the process is opposite. So we first, we already know what is a critical region because we know the right end point is just smaller than this uh, sample value. And now based on this given critical region, we can compute our probability to find this 1 minus p. And based on this, we will get our p-value. Okay, so this is how to find the p-value. And also similar to this one, the probability of x bar is on the right of this uh, critical region should become p over 2. And on the left is about also p over 2. Okay, so this is about two sides test. And then for the one side test, this will become our uh, just a little different. Yes, so now instead of find an interval, what we need, we will just uh, try to find about uh, only one in the point. So for example, if we still have our x bar here is at this right point, and then we will find our critical region is on the left of this uh, of this value. So in other words, now what we need to find is we just try to find our uh, critical, uh, our probability and will make our x bar is smaller than this end point. So if we say this is equal b, the x bar is smaller b, this probability is equal 1 minus p. Okay, so this is about how to use the p, uh, how to use the given data to find our p value. Okay, so this p value, we know p value is a more, the smallest uh, significance level to reject our hypothesis, non hypothesis test H0. So that means p value actually can help us draw some conclusion. So here, this lets me write a remark about this relationship. So if our p-value is smaller than or equal to our alpha, then what we can do is we will reject our h0. So because p-value is the smallest alpha to reject h0. So that means now we can have p-value smaller than alpha, we will reject. However, if p value is larger than alpha, then that means we should accept our h0. Or in other words, we fail to reject our h0. Okay, so this is about how to use the p value to reject or accept or do a hypothesis test. 
Okay, so this is the end of our videos about this uh, two type of uh, important errors and uh, the p-value. So in next video, I will start to talk about how to use this uh, hypothesis test to draw some conclusions about uh, population mean for the normal distribution when virus is known. So please subscribe to this channel and see you in next video.